Sex. Sex. <laughs> Sex. Sex. <laughs> Really the best part of the day is when you see a patient post-op and you see how happy they are, uh, that's the best thing that can happen. I know, you can't film me. Being in social media. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me hey, think girl, of a question. Wait, wait, read the free shot. Oh, are you supposed to ask me the question though? Yes. Crazy or what? <laughs> what is that for? Okay, Lori, what happens in a post-op appointment? What, as a patient, am I supposed to expect from you? Do it again, do it again. Okay, team, so as you know, or don't know, post-op appointments are typically one day, the day after surgery, one week, two weeks, and sometimes one month with me, and then they see the doctor. But any time that they want, they can have one of the doctors step in and check on them. But typically, I just go through instructions like how to wash their incisions, what garments to wear, how long will they wear their garment, breast massage, libo massage, um, things like that. And I don't typically like to go through every single thing that can go wrong. I just give them my card and say, if you're worried about anything, get in touch with me and uh, I will get right back to you and we'll chat it up. Washing instructions, okay. when they can, when they have to take their their bandages off, mm -hmm. just general hygiene after. I will tell most patients that they can shower um, at post-op day two, so two days after their procedure. They take off their garment, put their garment into the washer dryer, and they hop into the shower. They're going to use their soap and water. Dove or ivory is good enough. The surgical soap is just too strong. That's garbage. And they're going to wash directly over their incisions, even if they have staples. It's really important to wash and get off all that dry blood because dry blood, so scabs, are like footprints in cement. They'll leave a mark on the scar. So patients who want the nicest, most invisible scar must clean up their incision and clean off all that dry blood. I would ask you what are, what type of pain I'd have afterwards. What would be my recuperation length of time? Most patients feel really good a day after their procedure um, just because they're on medication and all of the freezing hasn't worn off yet. I usually remind patients that pain is sometimes the worst at around day three, day four post-op. And the most important thing in their first week after surgery is not to do too much. On the days that you feel good, if you do more than you should, then the next day you're gonna feel 10 times worse and you, you're putting yourself at risk for complications like bleeding um, and, and unnecessary swelling and stuff. Uh, recuperation, I mean, it depends. Most people reach their turnaround time as far as feeling better around the seven to 10 day mark and then um, they are slowly getting back into their uh, real life activities. Uh, what medication I should take? Um, the doctors set up each patient with a bag of post-op meds that they are given at discharge. They get um, extra strength Tylenol that they take around the clock just to keep their pain manageable. And for any breakthrough pain, they are given a narcotic, which is basically a heavy duty painkiller. Um, they get a pain or a medication for nausea. They get a medication uh, for inflammation as well as a natural 
um, medication for swelling, bruising, redness, which is Arnica. They get a stool softener, and they also have been added a uh, medication that helps with nerve pain, which has proven to be really beneficial, full stop. Um, um, how long will it take for my scars to fade? Okay, fine, 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 fine. So a really common question about post-op care is scars. Patients want to get on top of their scar care right away, but first they have to wash their incisions, and then once all the scabs flake off and it's just like a nice red mark, that's when they can start um, treating their scar. Usually that's about around the one month mark. What I tell patients to use for scars or what the doctors suggest is silicone. Why silicone? Because everyone hears about vitamin E and bio oil. Well, as you guys know, we are an evidence-based practice. So we do everything based on evidence. We don't just throw something at a patient and say, hey, I heard this is really good. You should use it. Um, so there's plenty of evidence out there that shows that silicone will reduce the redness and thickness of scars. Um, vitamin E and bio oil, they're great, but they really only hydrate the scar. Um, so silicone will reduce the redness and thickness of the scar. Am I gonna get um, infection? So lots of patients ask me about all of the possible things that can go wrong after surgery, um, including infection. The signs of infection are redness uh, around the surgical site. Uh, the patient just feels generally not well. Um, it's like feverish, uh, any oozing from the incisions. Um, uh, if the area is hot to touch, those kinds of things. Um, those are typical signs of infection, but I just tell the patient to, you know, get in touch with me or one of the doctors if they are concerned, rather than go through every possible thing that could go wrong, including infection. If the patient does get an infection, it's usually just a little skin hiccup that can be um, tackled with uh, better wound care or just a round of oral antibiotics. When can I start wearing a bra? Patients having breast procedures can switch to any bra they want after one month. Um, so this includes a sports bra, underwire, bralette, no bra. Those are all sports bras. Patients are allowed to leave the house after a week. Um, they can go back to work if their work is like a desk job. Um, or they can run simple errands. That's not like heavy lifting, heavy pushing, heavy pulling. Alcohol, that kind of thing. I say wait until you're completely off your prescription medication. And um, anything else, that is outside of daily self-care or going back to work can wait until the one month mark. After butt augmentation, how long before I can sit down comfortably? So um, for patients who have had butt augmentation, they can sit on their bum after two weeks until the two week mark, they must remain on their stomach. They can sit to go into the car because safety first. They can sit to uh, go pee. And if they absolutely need to, they can sit to eat their meal. But otherwise they must be either standing or on their stomach. At the two week mark, they can sit down for, you know, 
um, 20 to 30 minutes at a time, then they have to get up, wander around, and then they can sit down again. Travel, when can I travel? Patients are allowed to travel after a month. Um, if they're going somewhere hot, they can't go in the pool after a month. They have to wait two months before they can go in a swimming pool, hot tub, sauna, or bath. If everything looks great at a month, Dr. Lissa will typically say oceans are okay. So salt water is okay, but definitely not pool. So travel one month, swimming pools, hot tubs, saunas, baths, two months. Ocean is okay if everything looks the way we want it to look. When can I have sex again? When can I have sex? <laughs> how long before I can have sex? Uh, is how long do I have to wait before I have before I can have sex? Oh.